Okay, so it goes something like this. I'll preface this by saying it's almost impossible to talk about this experience because it's almost a non experience. It's beyond any experience you can possibly have as a human. It is the ultimate height of any experience that is even perceived as anywhere near possible. It's just so beyond everything you've ever experienced in your life, every psychedelic. It's just being thrown straight into the middle of the cosmos it's like loading a gun with the universe and firing it at your head it's just beyond ridiculous but I'll, I'll i'll do my best um so it goes something like this you sort of inhale for a certain amount of time um and then the effects are felt very very quickly um within about 10 seconds there's there's the thought usually the thought comes in well oh, you've you've really done it this time <laughs> you, you really, like, you really pushed the boat out a bit too far this time, haven't you? That that is kind of the, it's the last remnants of the ego just trying to put up a little fight. Once it starts, there is no stopping, and everything starts to go a little bit fuzzy. I lay back on the bed, and the whole room disappears into kind of fractal patterns of white light. Just very quickly, this happens in an instant, within a, in a second. It all just, what is, whatever is making up reality, the light that is uh, coagulating into what we see as form, breaks apart into its more sort of natural state, into just fragments of whatever you want to call that. What, what I perceived only a moment ago as myself and as the world are no longer there. So the bed disappears, myself disappears, there's no, there's no self in other, that is gone, and it disappears into this overwhelming white, infinite kind of light. If, if there's a way of describing it, I guess it would just be like the light of the star. Um, you know, kind of like when you look up at the night sky and you see very bright, bright stars, it's like all of those lights magnified into this just kind of white screen of just in infinity and there's no you there's no there's no world there's nothing that you anything you ever identified as you is all, all gone within within such a short amount of time it's it's it spins your mind so there's there's an unknown amount of time in this space which is just infinite oneness with everything not even oneness with everything because there are no other things there's no you left all that's left is this sort of knowing there's a knowing beyond words that everything in the universe is all the same thing. It's not, not a thing, but it's all the same energy. It's all the same, it could be said, awareness. It is only that. It is all comes from this one source and there's no separation between any of it. Anything beyond that is, is pure illusion and that this is the actual natural state of things. It's very, very much a home, homely feeling. And so there's a certain amount of time, um, even though time and space doesn't exist in this in this uh, place, there's a certain amount of time spent in there, which may as well be days. It it passes by on the clock as maybe ten minutes, but it's it may as well be days, weeks. It doesn't matter because it doesn't it doesn't have any. There's no reference points as to what time is at this point. You've literally become what people call God, Brahman, the Tao. It's the absolute ground of existence, and it's all known. All answers to all questions are all known without without using concepts or words. It's all just Im immediately perceived. Every question is just dissolved. There's nothing left to be known. And then after that, once the ego, just, just any smidgen of an ego starts to come back online, that's where things get, for me, very interesting. To start with, there were fears that come up. Oh, no, I'm lost in infinity forever. I don't even know what I am. And the ego is trying to kind of go, what, what's going on here? What is, it just get a grip. It wants to grip and put it in a box that so feels safe again. But now after a few experiences of that happening, what tends to happen is the ego is asking questions and going, so like, things like, so was there anything, ever anything to worry about? If this is my true state, what, what was there to worry about? And it's almost like a conversation with the universe, although it's not. There's not like two me and another being. It's just a conversation happening by itself with answers immediately thrown back from God knows where. 
And it's like, no, there was no others. Uh, there was no worries. There was, there's nothing to worry about ever. This is, you never left home. This is your home. Everything is always perfect, full of bliss and full of love. As, as hippie as that sounds, that's, that's, that's kind of the truth that's revealed. And after that, laughter begins. And not just like a, a normal laugh, like, like, oh, there's a joke told. It's like the biggest joke ever told times infinity. And um, the laughter is like a stored up tension that has been released after eons of being trapped and condensed and twisted and, and believed in. And it's seen that you, you've just this whole time, all your worries, all thoughts of any kind of, anything relating to worry, trying to impress people, worried about losing loved ones, about the state of the world, the state of other people, something someone might have said to you. It seemed that ultimately there is nothing to worry about whatsoever. Everything is the same thing. That it's all a play of form. And the form is you. It's such a relief that this self, I call it the cosmic self, is like undressing its clothes. Uh, it's like I've been wearing these clothes for millions of years I, I let's let loose some of these clothes and every time you laugh it's like a cosmic laughter like god is laughing through you and it's like a releasement of of these clothes that it's been wearing and it's like, oh finally and then there's another wave of laughter <laughs> it's just it's just an unstoppable roll of laughter because every thought that i think about is immediately resolved every single problem i've ever had every polarity duality anything any position I've ever taken is immediately resolved and seen as ultimately ridiculous. And we've, I've been subject to the greatest joke of all time, um, which is, I am the joke. The whole thing is the joke. There's nothing to ever worry about. We, we've chosen to do this. And I, I just begin this wave of unstoppable laughter. And every time I laugh, there's like a releasement of, of some layer of being and the being expands and expands and expands and the more I laugh the more it expands oh finally I can stop I can stop pretending now it's so blissful that it's just it's it's laughter that comes out but the laughter is beyond laughter any kind of laughter I've ever experienced um, it literally brings tears to my face and I end up completely exhausted because it's just almost too much and it's like we've left ourselves a breadcrumb trail of bliss home and it just and the further down the trail you go it's like the bread comes become cakes and then <laughs> bigger treats and then it just gets better and better the nearer home you get the nearer this the natural state you get the more blissful and more full of humor and love and laughter it becomes and and the more nearer you get to this everyday waking life which we class, classify ourselves as you know a person in the world the further away you get from that. But you never actually leave anywhere. You're always in that state, you just can't see it. So this happens and this goes on for, oh, it sometimes goes on for half an hour, an hour. And by the end of this, it feels like my heart has exploded and is encompassing the whole universe. And it can sometimes change quality at this point to where there's an hour, an outpouring of compassion and love for all beings um even beings that i as paul in this relative world take take a dislike to that actually they're all so beautiful and so full of love and bliss at their core it's just they're wearing some clothes that for a little while they're wearing these clothes of just being a very dislikable character and there's no mistake in that it's all just part of the play and all of this is, it just, it just makes my sort of whole being pour out with just love for everything, love for the whole of life um, and everyone. And, and usually some laughter as well, um, still, still coming out just at, at the, mainly at myself, at the fact I've taken it seriously at, at all. 
that I ever worry about anything. That seems to be a very funny thing in that state. And usually I sort of end up exhausted and go into kind of a deep meditation and rest for a while if there's time, um, which I find a very sort of nice period of the, just sitting there and just kind of this, this blissful state of knowing, of feeling very connected to everyone and everything, um, and a lot of love for every, everything. And it's like, <laughs> and in my most recent one, um, it was <laughs> pictures of my dog and my wife and uh, even squirrels in the trees outside came into my head. <laughs> and they, I, I said to them, did you know this? <laughs> and, and they went, of course we can you. <laughs> like, uh, we are it. And that, that just caused me so, like, I literally was in hysterics. Like them, and so much so, like, I was wailing with laughter. If you've seen it really clearly, you've sort of seen through the whole sort of facade of things um, that we are literally just upholding these masks. And um, it's difficult not to look at everyone in, in a sense of love as opposed to, oh, this person's in my way and in Tesco. Uh, <laughs> still getting my way, bloody pain. But, um, you know, it, it's uh, the whole, it's like a perspective change. Nothing's really changed, but the view it's almost like i've taken a, a higher view like i've got on top of a platform and i can see everything a little bit clearer as opposed to this ground view that we usually have of, of the world and of people you can see a slightly higher view you can see the slightly bigger picture of things so if, when things appear bad um you, it seems that, that actually that's not that's only an immediate judgment of that situation being bad in what's true is beyond good and bad um, and there's no, no such thing as a bad thing. It, in one way or another, that thing is happening for a reason and it will turn out absolutely fine. And it's, it goes beyond any kind of, it carries on beyond any uh, sort of remnants of any chemical interactions that may have gone on in the body, which may have caused this state. It just pours out into everything I do at the moment. Um, and I have noticed since, since I have had any experience with uh, 5-MeO, is it's just poured out that love and that bliss in that state. Unlike with other sort of psychedelics, it's not just seen as, oh, that was interesting. What can I integrate into that? It's just like, and whether you want to or not, that love at the core of everything is just known much more fully and pours out onto everything in, in the form of humor, laughter, uh, love, bliss, all of the what we'd call positive qualities. And it's not like you're trying to be positive, it's just outpouring. It's like this vessel is just overflowing with that. The thing is, there's no such thing as time. In in that state, it seemed very clearly there's no such thing as time. What The thing that powers this life, the life itself, is is never ending. It's It can't be. It's outside of time and space. It's not part of this play. And I don't know the reasons behind it, if there are reasons behind it or what what our whole game is here that we've got going on. That's not completely clear, but I know that it is just a game and it is, we, the truth of what we are is eternal. It's um, eternal and it's blissful and it's full of love and it sounds too good to be true, And every, but it just is known that that's the truth. It's um, it's unbelievable that that's true. I, I, I'm, you know, it's almost difficult to say these things because you just sound like a bit of a nutcase. But it's these things are true. It's just known directly, as clearly as when you, you know, you go, "What is the taste of an apple?" and you eat an apple, as opposed to someone telling you whether there's life and death and stuff. It's like you've eaten that knowledge. You know it directly, and um, at the sort of core of everything we can't help but be this blissful uh, pure love overflowing uh being that um has just just for a little while has decided to dream up this life in a world just for the sake of because because it's so full of love and so such unconditional love it's it can a sort of outpour and experience as every possible experience and sometimes that experience is what we call bad but there's no mistake to it it's just outpouring as that for a little while it kind of seems like this is the trip actually as crazy as that sounds this life every day is actually the trip <laughs> what that state is 
is so simple and so perfect and so complete that this is this is this is infinitely more complex than what that state is like there's so much going on here um in everyday life and the fact we're able to experience even have this conversation as apparent separate individuals is just crazy really and but you never can't question that because that seems like the normal state of things to say it's predetermined isn't quite right but it somehow is it's like you can't quite see around the corner but it's like your part of you knows what's coming in a way and that's kind of seems really funny and i don't know why that's funny but it's like none of it's a mistake it's ultimately you can't get lost and you can't lose this game it's a game where everyone wins but there is not everyone there's only one but you can't it's a game you can't lose the game is just to experience life and that's it you can't possibly lose if you wake up in a dream great but there's no more there's no different to having a lucid dream and becoming lucid in a dream there's no sort of higher purpose for that um it might just bring the quality of the dream a bit better you might have a bit more fun with the dream if that's if that's you know your preference of dreams but ultimately the only the only thing we, we can't possibly go wrong <laughs> so well i think david cast says it very well i've got a little piece here from his book uh perfect brilliant stillness um and he says here what would you give to know absolutely know beyond any doubt that everything really is all right that there is no reason to fear that there is no need to feel despair or loss or uncertainty that all the pain and hurt and evil we have seen truly is only an illusion and that the most beautiful things we have experienced are only a glimpse a small taste of what is truly real and truly ours that everything is all right that everything is perfect as it is that all is well this is what i see and what i know at the end of a human vision lies the final ultimate truth in as much as such can be with be at all within our vision even at its, its extreme limit it cannot be experienced or thought of or spoken of because it cannot be conceptualized this ultimate beingness and ultimate consciousness overflows constantly in the outpouring of its essence its nature which is pure absolute love beyond our conceptions of love complete compassion total truth ultimate beauty outpouring